does it mean to rejoice for many it is an expression of happiness for another it is a shout for some persons is dancing for some others it is to be able to have something come into your life that will give you some form of enlightenment glory be to the name of the lord now it's important that if you must take advantage of every prophetic word every time a prophetic word comes to you you must see it and understand it in two dimensions don't you ever say two dimensions the first dimension is the dimension of the letter which the prophetic word came the letter is the english caption for example divine restoration so the minimum standard of understanding that prophetic word is from the english transliteration which is the letter glory be to god so this month is our month of rejoicing so one way to understand what rejoicing is is to first of all the first part is to look at it what does rejoicing mean if you don't have a dictionary it's important because the way we communicate and the way the prophetic word comes to us is by english so the minimum way of understanding any prophetic word that comes to you is to first of all look at it from the english translation glory be to god so i'm telling you this because it's important not just this month but throughout the year next year is going to be like that every time the word of god comes you should have two ways of receiving the prophetic word the first one is the sensory understanding that comes from the letter and then the second dimension of looking at it is from the spiritual understanding that comes from the rema the rema is the revelation of that word so if you stop at the place of understanding is by english you will not get the best of it that is why we always will pray every time the word of god is going to come so that our hearts can be enlightened you already have eyes why is the bible now asking you to pray according to ephesians 1 18 that your spiritual eyes be, be enlightened because it's not a, enough to view the word of god from the physical understanding you must ask that your spiritual enlightenment comes by the spirit of god glory be to god so turn to your neighbor say neighbor two levels of understanding sensory understanding and spiritual understanding for those of you who are writing you can write it the first one sensory understanding comes from the letter and it's the letter kills because if you understand it only from the periphery then you will not get the best but the second one which is the spiritual understanding comes from the revelation and it comes by the spirit of god now let me give you the sensory definition of rejoicing i know most of you know it but i just want to give it for those of you who want to write it means to obtain and express joy from something that has occurred that's what rejoicing means to express or to obtain and express joy from something that has occurred that means that if you're looking at the base understanding the english understanding if you look critically joy is extrinsic meaning that it comes from outside that's from the english translation because it says clearly there that it is obtained and then it's something that comes to you as a result of an occurrence and it's outside it also means as a synonym to experience happiness it means to be gladdened by something that has come to you now for anybody who is not born again for anybody who does not have the spirit of god this is what his understanding or her understanding of rejoicing will mean so they will be surprised to be seeing us despite the fact that we do not have any thing happening physically around us yet we are rejoicing someone who has probably peeped into crest hotel and has seen us shouting coming to praise and worship the way we were rejoicing and shouting this place be wondering what's happening have these guys received some alerts in their phone why is pastor julius turning around like a merry-go-round why is pastor bamshaw wagging his leg like a calf i mean why is all the joys why because of the seven the second level of definition and the second level of definition is biblical and is revelational what is it rejoicing is to possess and express positive energy that comes from the knowledge of god i'm going to break that down for you is to possess and express a positive energy that comes from a knowledge of god another way of putting it is rejoicing is joy on display follow me carefully i'm going somewhere with this rejoicing also means from scripture is a kind of posture that comes with a knowledge and understanding of god's plan about every occurrence in your life i'll say it again it is a posture on action that is expressed 
from an understanding that comes from the knowledge of God's promises in your life. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In the course of this next few minutes, I'm going to be sharing, breaking this down for you. That means that while the sensory understanding of rejoicing is extrinsic, that is coming from outside, the one that God wants us to understand is the one that is innate, is the one that comes from within, is the one that comes from the Lord. That's why if you read critically, the choir prophetically didn't stop at saying rejoice. Choir, the first part of that chorus, what does it say? Rejoice. Say it out loud, rejoice in the Lord. That means for you to understand perfectly what God is trying to tell us to do in December is not to stop at rejoice. The next thing you want to see, what is God saying? He says, rejoice in the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Turn to another, say rejoice in has a place where it emanates from. So any perspective that you look at it, if it's not from the perspective from scripture, you would have missed it. I want to say something and i don't want you to be shocked god doesn't want you happy i said god doesn't want you happy oh some of you are wondering pastor you've come again don't throw your stones yet god doesn't want you happy he wants you joyful why because happiness if you read carefully from the dictionary or if you read from even the, the natural way of understanding it happiness comes when you have obtained something when you buy a car you are happy when you get promoted you are happy when you get married you are happy when you start something new you are happy but have you observed that most of these things that are external that happen to you after a period of time familiarity with those things causes those happiness or those feelings to fizzle away you can't live your life like that having a roller coaster of happiness emotions no that is why god wants you joyful because when you are joyful in the lord it's not predicated on something external it's predicated on the presence of god inside of you and that is why in the lord the bible says he will never leave us nor forsake us if you are here you're born again and you have the lord dwelling in you that is where your joy should come from not from what is happening or occurring in your life it's very important that we understand this especially at this part of the year where many of us are asking we have come to the end of the year then you are looking what has god done for me all the <laughs> prayer points that i wrote all the new year resolutions all the plans that i have where is it ladies and gentlemen i'd like to announce to you god knows that god understands that god has a firm grip of what he has said to you concerning divine restoration and he on he knows that he still has a grand plan i mean his grand plan is still in effect to cause it to come to pass but because he can see the devil lurking all around you to snatch away that complete circle that is why he has sent the word of rejoicing why because rejoicing is the posture that you take to help you complete the cycle of divine restoration bible speaking concerning jesus in hebrew chapter 2 12 verse 2 he says for the joy that was set before him what did he do he endured the cross he despised the shame then he was able to obtain ladies and gentlemen there is a joy for complete divine restoration but to get it joy has to first of all be a focus before a feeling you just missed something right there joy is first of all rejoicing is first of all a focus than a before it becomes a feeling and sometimes the feeling doesn't come with it the bible says looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set hello jesus was if jesus was going to follow the pain he was experiencing on the cross if you are going to follow the depression or the the, the rejection or the disappointments that you have faced this year and expect your joy to come from it you will not be able to obtain the price but jesus obtained joy from the expected outcome of his endurance somebody needs to understand what i'm talking about today one of the things that will guarantee the final effect or the final result of your blessings is despite what you are going through right now 
you don't depend on what you are going through right now you look into the promises of god for your life and from there obtain the strength to continue moving until you receive every blessing glory be to the name of the lord so let's make some progress here um john chapter 15 verse 11 just to give you a scriptural backup for that statement that i made that god doesn't want you happy he wants you joyful and i hope you wrote that john 15 verse 11 the bible says very clearly these things i have spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full can you see this right now so god doesn't want you happy he wants you joyful why because happiness is as a result of happenstances that means if there are no good happenstances around you you will not be happy but the joy comes from the word of god that is resident inside of you that ensures perpetual positive energy to keep moving until you receive the blessings of god and guess what god doesn't want you partially joyful he wants you fully joyful you know why the reason is because half tank joy will not take you to your destination of divine restoration you need full tank let me give you an example um there are there are certain there are certain uh, things that will not be able to uh okay my my, my son they have uh, has this my children they have this cartoon that they watch um blaze and the monster machine I, I if you're a parent here you should know blaze and the monster machine i mean yeah and blaze is a wonderful car the car can turn into anything it can turn into a monster truck it can turn into a plane it can turn into a boat and you know in the cartoon world everything is possible so but i the cartoon is very interesting because it teaches the children sometimes on different scientific technological things and this particular time i was watching the cartoon with them and they were teaching them on dynamics i mean thermodynamics and teaching them the law of pressure and there was this stone that needed to be moved for their vehicles to pass there's this guy this car let me not say guy this car the name of the car that's the bad guy it's called what ah you guys know what it's called crusher <laughs> just ask any kid that watches that it's crusher crusher is always spoiling the party you know he's always doing something swindling and it's every time they're on the race so crusher is always sending so this particular time crusher sent a big boulder to stand on the way and the boulder is like let's say 100 pounds so when he put the boulder then blaze and all his friends came to that particular place and they couldn't move the boulder and so they weighed it and the boulder was weighing 100 pounds now the machine that they have that had pressure after of course blaze had turned into a machine you know like a monster truck he wanted to push it but the strength of that particular machine was just 80. now it could not move that particular boulder because the boulder is 100. so if the strength of the machine is 80 will it move the boulder what does the machine need to do to be able to move the boulder to be able to rev up and have strength to have up to a hundred pounds or more than hundred in fact if it is a hundred it will not move it because it's going to be a power tussle, right? So it has to be at least 101 or 102 or 150. So that's how they kept revving up until it became 120. Then the monster machine or blaze was able to push it. I use that example to let you know. There are certain oppositions that have come your way that your joy half tank will not cut it. Your current disposition your current level of belief and faith in the word of god your current level of what you believe god can do will not move that opposition because there is a level i hope you know faith is in levels yes. yeah i taught you that before those of you who have missed the who missed the service please go and get the messages online the different levels of faith i talk about common faith natural faith great faith little faith dead faith great faith prevailing faith i thought about that so by the way faith and joy they are related i'm going to give you that shortly but, so i gave you that understanding to know that the word of god coming to you wants your joy to be full glory be to the name of the lord i said glory be to the name of the lord now if you're writing write as a subheading notes on rejoicing very quickly notes on rejoicing certain things that you should know about rejoicing number one 
the question number one is for is in form of a question where should we find our reason for rejoicing it's clear but we want to itemize it where should we find our reason for rejoicing throughout the month of december jonathan there is a plan that god has for you there is a blessing that god has for you there is a posture you need to take to get that blessing and that is why god sent us rejoicing but the question is where should my rejoicing come from i know it's very clear but i'm going to be bringing out for you to see more on that the question is where should we find our reason for rejoicing if that's a question the answer is there for you it is where in the lord pastor help me understand what it means to be in the lord am i going to die and then become spiritual to enter the lord what does that mean philippians chapter 4 verse 4 it was paul that was writing this particular statement and he said rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice rejoice in the lord why what does it mean to rejoice in the lord to rejoice in the lord is simply to put your trust to put your firm belief in the promises of god is to have a clear cut stable consistent continuous constant conscious understanding of the word of god that is resident inside of you now john chapter 15 verse 11 has already given us one very important place or one very important raw material of joy which is the word of god so meaning if god says rejoice in the lord since you became born again you became a host that carries god now god is resident in you or his you are your spirit has become active where you get related to god but what platform is your rejoicing in the lord going to be coming from is the platform of his word did you get what i just said is the raw material of the word of god inside of you meaning that the place of the lord inside of you where you get your rejoicing from is the word of god in you the bible speaking concerning samuel and the lord appeared unto samuel in shiloh how by his word so ladies and gentlemen in this month of december your divine your cycle of divine complete of divine restoration is directly proportional to the rejoicing that you can harness now your rejoicing is directly proportional to the amount of the word of god resident inside of you no word no resource material for joy and to gloria the word of god that you have please sit down is going to now if the word of god that you have if your heart don't, don't forget i've i thought before your heart is the dynamo for those of you who are engineers or who have some basic understanding of what a dynamo is it com it, it converts energy from one form to another the reason why this fan can blow is because it converted electrical energy to mechanical energy so what converts the word of god to joy is the word is your heart glory be to god what is the raw material the first form of energy is the word of god so if you don't have the raw material there's nothing for the heart to convert to rejoicing did you get that now it's not enough to have the raw material of the word it's important that you have sufficient word for the requisite opposition that you'll be facing this month because if you have low word in you then that means you have low raw material to be converted to to confront that opposition that is inside of you and that is why the next instruction after rejoicing the lord is what all all they taught us in electrical engineering that is impossible to construct a perpetual machine do you know what's a perpetual machine a perpetual machine is one that you construct and begins to work and doesn't stop till eternity it's impossible you know the, the one someone asked the lecturer in my class he says sir why is why is it not possible to start a gem then with the light of the gem you connect it back to the gem so that i can continue powering the gem do you understand it sounds logical right why should i be using petrol to power when i can have power from the generator then direct it back to the gen to be powering the gen and then i'll have perpetual power it sounds logical right but there's a system in engineering you cannot why wear and tear must occur what is wear and tear the parts of the machine we consider used to wear out you understand what i'm saying now and because of that the gen must shut down ladies and gentlemen it is possible it is impossible to construct a perpetual electrical machine but it's possible to construct a perpetual joy machine 
based on the consistent impartation of the word of god that is why the bible says rejoice in the lord always what does it mean to rejoice in the word i mean what does it mean to rejoice always what's the dictionary meaning of always let me find it i got a very important and very depth in-depth understanding of what it means for always who is ready for it who is ready for it the in-depth understanding or the in-depth description of always is always Uh, i got you right there always there's no better way to explain it always is always all the time that means that ladies and gentlemen if you do not have the word of god if you didn't put anything in your tank today there's no guarantee that the opposition come your way you can overcome it december is not the time to be an epileptic christian december is not the time where you want to think whether you should pray today come in with the father today what do you want to think because those things are the parameters that guarantees that your joy is full tank he says rejoice in the lord always in the lord so just to stop at that particular part of where should i find the reason for rejoicing in the lord and i gave you the first scripture of philippians 4 4 let me give you the second one psalm chapter 5 and verse 11 very quickly psalm 5 and 11 the bible says but let all those that rejoice put their trust where put their trust where in your salary in your boss put your trust in your family put your all those that put their trust in thee that's god rejoice let them ever shout for joy because thou defends them let them also love thy name and be joyful in where in thee glory be to the name of the lord the man that is not born again cannot experience what it means to rejoice because he does not have the lord inside of him any word that he hears the devil comes and steals it quickly because there is no place for the implantation of the word if you're here and you are still dilly dallying with sin doing things that are not proud i mean you're not proud of to this december is the time where you want to begin to make up your mind and say lord I know you've been talking to me about this but i'm making up my mind this december my heart is totally for you because except you are perpetually remaining in the lord your rejoicing can fail you god is such a god of joy that his presence and his reward to the believer is also called joy matthew chapter 25 verse 23 matthew 25 verse 23 clearly puts it when he was talking to giving a parable he says and the lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over few things i will make thee ruler over many things let's read the last statement together one two read enter into the enter into the what his presence is also called joy his reward is also called joy now, to those, for those of you who are wondering, how did rejoicing become joy? I gave you a very clear indication or ex representing rejoicing is joy on display. Glory be to God. Now, let's move very quickly. As we proceed, the reason why you need to remain in the Lord and remain consistently in the Word of God is because that is the raw material for joy. Now, why do you need joy? Because the joy of the Lord is your the bible speaking in proverbs 24 verse 10 if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is that means that your faith is tested in the day of adversity not when things are going well you don't know how strong you are until you are faced with trial and temptation you don't know how powerful your christian faith is until there is a delay in what you're trusting god for Oh Lord, give me anointing. <laughs> like Bishop David Oedipo, the just finished Shiloh. <laughs> Can I give you some hidden history of his life that you don't know anything about? You were not there when he bought the land, they beat the bachelor, and he came and brought, and brought it down. And he was wondering if God called him for a long time. You are not there 
when his own daughter as anointed let's not even go to that his own wife as anointed as he was for i'm trying to remember the number of years now or number of months she was sick and became a shadow of herself there's a book rescued from something rescued from destruction go and get the book my 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 <laughs> it's a book that will build your faith legends of the faith they go through stuff so when you see them what they're doing and you're saying lord let me be like them be ready for the level of opposition that they also face <laughs> so your strength is directly proportional to the joy that you have in god because the joy of the lord is your strength glory be to god i want to also remind you that the reason why in this month of december god is saying you should rejoice because your rejoicing is the platform which he's going to deliver the final blessings of divine restoration while that is the vehicle hear this the devil is going to be coming after your joy and do you know why he's coming after your joy because if you don't have joy you don't have the strength they that wait upon the lord shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall renew their strength now so if you don't have strength you can't run and if you don't have strength you can't receive hear this because the devil knows that most of us have become so physical and we don't have the understanding that our joy should should come from the realm of the spirit or from our from from the lord he comes and he makes you think that your joy is external so hear this when he touches your health he's not after your health he's after your joy if he touches your car he doesn't drive he doesn't have driver's license he's coming after your joy he touches your child he's not after your child he can't be a good father he can't even have a father he can't even, he's after your touches your academics touches your business touches whatever it is he's after your joy so that you stop coming to a place where you can receive the word of god so that you stop praying be very honest how many of you have had experiences that have made you stop praying my hand is up how many of you had experiences that stopped you say i know this church i know go again ah wait see they write my name on top the right church on top of my head am i the only one like i preached on tuesday perpetual cycle of darkness you are finishing from this one you are entering the next one you're finished from this one you're entering the next one ah, ah. now only you now only you are <laughs> Now only you, night devil, see from register. Your mates have moved forward. You are looking at your life. Ha! Huh, what's actually happening? Hear this! The devil is after your joy. But I declare by the Spirit of God, your eyes are being right, redirected to the Word of God to remind you that as long as you still have the Lord, <laughs> God's Word for your life will still come to pass delay is not denial overtaking is allowed they may have gone but your time is not the same when god came upon elijah he overran and outran the chariots of ahab paul wrote this particular scripture of philippians 4 verse 4 where from prison is anybody that like to go to prison here raise your hand paul wrote rejoice in the lord always from prison right it sounds it sounds but, but that's actually imagine someone in the law court found guilty and the sentence is 50 years in prison then the person starts hey that's what paul did he didn't dance though but he said even though i'm in prison not for a just cause i rejoice so he was telling the philippian church rejoice in the lord always because your joy should not be tampered with whether i'm in prison or not i count it all joy glory be to the name of the lord <laughs> so remain in the lord are you hearing me I say remain in the lord you are trusting god for something and it hasn't come remain in the lord remain in his word remain in the fellowship of the brethren 
Did you see uh, Edifon leading us in praise today? Where is he? Edifon, do you have, wait, wait. Do you have, do you have any issue you are trusting God for? I mean, I have. I have. He has. I, I, see, can I tell you, those, those, those that backed up today, you guys did amazing well. You, you, you're, you're, you guys released a, a, a joy. I don't want to use virus, but let me just use it. You inoculated us with the spirit of rejoicing. Let me tell you something, choir. I don't know why God is leading me here. Listen, you, 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 we, we become what we see. So whatever you cannot replicate, if your worship is not in the place where we can follow, our worship is going to be shallow. That is why you cannot afford not to have a, a fiery worship altar. Because if you don't have one, you can tell here. I don't want to tell you, but there are some people that have spiritual tam thermometers in church. They can grade. And you know what? It's not their fault. They, you have been deputized to lead them in the place. So when they come, they are coming with all manner of bags and baggages. All manner of depression, deprivation. So when they come, you have yours. But because you are a minister, you become a flame of fire. Bible says he makes his angel spirits and his ministers flames of fire. So you put whatever it is away and then you come alive. And then you lead us. When you come up and it looks as if it's dry, you start from the place of the spirit. I've always told some of you here, you can never go wrong when you engage the spirit of God. The spirit takes you over. I pray every one of you, as having to minister from your place of pain, as you consistently do that, may the God of heaven cause you to be the first partakers of the blessings of this house in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated. Number two, when should we rejoice? When should we rejoice? Please write it down. Number two, when should we rejoice? The answer is already there. Tell your neighbor, the answer is there. When should we rejoice? And what's the scriptural reference? Philippians 4 verse 4. That means, despite the inconsistency, rejoice always. Let me give you another scripture to portray that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16. Write it down. 1 Thessalonians 5 16. Always. Now, let me help somebody. If you get this one right, you can stand up and start going home. <laughs> I'm just joking. Get this. The word of the Lord over us this month is what? Rejoicing. Our month of rejoicing. Where should we rejoice? In the Lord. When should we rejoice? Always. Now, let's go back. In the Lord, what? In the Lord, in his word, inside of us meaning if you don't have the word of god inside of you you don't have the raw material for rejoicing and your strength for facing december is directly proportional to the level of the word that you have inside of you because your word level will determine your faith level now let me stop here and give you the direct correlation between faith and joy faith is like a dynamite how many of us know dynamite you know dynamite dynamite is something that can when detonated it can completely decimate and obliterate anything within the particular circumference around it glory be to god now hear this faith is like a dynamite but it is it has zero capacity for destruction if it's not activated is that true what activates faith is joy as powerful as faith is the bible says through faith the world was created through faith valiant men did valiantly hear this you cannot have your faith activated to quench the fiery dust of the enemy if you don't have joy pastor what do you mean the bible says in ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 it says be strong in the lord and put on your whole armor is faith part of the armor yes so that part that it says be strong in the lord you can exchange joy for it why nehemiah 8 verse 10 the joy of the lord is your strength so be strong in the lord is actually directly proportional to joy so without joy you can't actually put on the whole armor glory be to god now jesus said in john 15 verse 11 i have spoken these words to you my words so that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full watch this what is the raw material of faith faith no 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 what is the activator of faith joy what is the raw material of faith the word Romans 10 17 and faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God guess what the same raw material for faith is the same is the same raw material for joy 
but the difference is that while one is the capacity to grab the other one is the capacity to activate faith that's why he says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor so that you can withstand the whole plans of the enemy let's just move on so rejoice always number two when should you rejoice rejoice always second reason why when um second reason for when you should rejoice or second point on when you should rejoice so if you're writing the first one is 2a which is always 2b rejoice when you face trials this december ladies and gentlemen uh i'm sorry but be ready for some trials man of god some of us have been facing trials it has been the breakfast now <laughs> yeah oh some of you are laughing don't worry you will not have breakfast in the name of jesus not that kind of breakfast but but, but the truth of the matter is that even if you are served that kind of breakfast eh? rejoice oh some of you just missed a good place to shout rejoice <laughs> hallelujah when should you rejoice when you are faced with trials and temptations james chapter 1 verse 2 what does it say my brethren let's read together my brethren count it all joy when you fall into virus how many of you ever know know what a ledger is a ledger a, a financial ledger like a financial statement oh my banker big brother here he knows you have, you need to have income and expenditure now the word count is a financial term do you agree now the bible is saying count it so when you are counting when you are counting your blessing when you are counting your income this year and then you are looking at january to december and then you see oh god blessed me with this god bless me with that and then i face this trial don't skip it god says count it you just missed what i said he said count that trial ladder house count those things we faced as part of the blessing he says count it all joy while while you are facing those trials why because the trial of your faith is bringing forth the blessings now there are other blessings you're going to see patience faith but first of all god says count it all joy until when you are counting your blessings for this year don't skip the trials count plus the trials why because the scripture has made us see that we should count it all joy now matthew 5 verse 10 to 12 quickly let's read this scripture matthew 5 10 to 12 bible says blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the what kingdom of god blessed are you when they revile you is there anybody that anybody cursed on you this year anybody someone disappointed you by speaking behind your back anybody that backstabbed you this year anybody who did something to you stole your money or did something to you this year raise your hand let me see you all right this is you god is talking about he says blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all man of e of evil falsely ah my god this year ah this boy here there's some things i heard i was like me like this this is my small life hey ah uh, uh, i mean I, I, when i hear these things i'm also shocked uh she shocked me yes they speak falsely against me guess what verse 12 now says what some of you don't know some of you don't know why i used to do what i do here sometimes i just finished hearing something that was negative then i activate this word god says blessed am i so if he says blessed then he says rejoice glory be to god maybe i'm just coming from 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 a situation at home i don't have any reason to come and get excited about the word of god to preach to you but you know what i always know if i can't get the enemy to take my joy then he can't stop me from getting the blessing do you know there are times where i just took injection in the morning and i'm coming to preach this year and now i'm talking about my physical body now so there are some of you when you just have headache you just say hod then you change your voice i'm sorry i can't come to church hey the joy of the lord is your strength the bible says in the pleasant the presence of god there is fullness of joy where do you expect your strength to come from if you stay at home see this tuesday uh, please i beg you in the name of god if there is any negative cycle in your bloodline don't miss this tuesday you know why because we have deputized this tuesday to pray those 13 prayers you know i was going to lead us to pray last tuesday right but god gave another prophecy what this particular tuesday 
we are coming with those 13 prayer points we have started shattering destroying covenant witchcrafts that have that are in our bloodline some of you don't know you think witchcraft is when someone carries a broom and is flying witchcraft has turned into a manner of things now i'm telling you the truth and that is why he told us he gave us an instruction if you love yourself and you love your family you love your your future those of you are not married future wife or husband do you know that there are some husbands you marry some men you marry they inoculate you or initiate you into a negative bloodline and you don't know so you get married and you are wondering this thing never occurred in my family why is it happening now that's what this tuesday we're going to be doing this tuesday and you know what we're going to remind you of that covenant of dust ash and salt if you want you can come with it your dust your ash and salt it's not something that is strange fresh teaching is going to come just to remind us then we are going to be told listen he told us from scripture i hope you know the earth hears now where is the devil we've been taught where is he where are your ancestors in the ground so we are picking the dust so and we are going to speak certain things into it on tuesday and we are why are you speaking to it because the dust represents no the 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 far-reaching dimensions of your ancestry so when you speak to the dust you're also speaking to covenants are you aware there are some people who have spoken into your lineage that are dead but the covenant is still active so you want to speak into the dust oh glory to god i beg you in the name of god don't miss on tuesday you are wondering why some things are happening in your lineage you're wondering some things see we are already in christ blessed be god for grace but i tell you the truth there are certain dimensions of experiences you cannot have until you do these things so this tuesday 5 p.m it's one hour 30 minutes we usually have buses that will take people home please when you come come ready to join us in faith glory be to the name of the lord now i'll give you one more when should we rejoice number three to see when you can't seem to feel your way out when you can't seem to feel your way out what's the scripture for this habakkuk 3 17 to 18. the bible says though the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be on the vines all the labor of the olive shall fall and the field shall yield no meat and the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall not be any herd in the store does that represent your bands your bank account does that represent your not even your bank account your spiritual bank accounts there are some of you it's like you, you you you've toiled you served but somehow you can't still find the energy when it comes to pray you can't still find the energy when it comes to study some of you have even given up on service to god because the energy is no longer there the bible says in verse 18 when you see all these things what should you do somebody say it out loud yet i will yet i will and i will joy in the god of my salvation glory be to the name of the lord finally as we wrap up why should i rejoice why number three which is why should i rejoice you should rejoice because it is an instruction for the lord for your lifting it is an is a commandment for the lord that has your blessings attached for it if you don't do it you forfeit the blessing when paul was writing the bible says every scripture is written for our doctrine then for our correction and admonition so if you do not rejoice because you are facing present temptations that means you are forfeiting your blessing i hope you know every bless every word of god that comes to you comes with a blessing attached as soon as you do it you don't need to pray it comes into your life into effect immediately rejoicing is not just an advice it's a command rejoice in the lord always two scriptural references philippians 4 4 psalms 5 verse 11. number two reason why you should rejoice you will reap the benefits of rejoicing don't you know say neighbor there are benefits for rejoicing ah there are benefits of rejoicing the number one benefit of rejoicing is because i will start i won't finish because of time number one your faith is polished so if you're writing benefits of rejoicing can be the heading your faith is polished and renewed by your rejoicing when you are go when you rejoice irrespective of whatever it is you're going through how do i know james chapter one and verse three he says count it all joy from verse two when you face all manner of temptations and trials why 
The Bible says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, work at patience. Uncle Yax, you need to know, you need to be reminded, sir, that the trial of your faith is the trial. Why God is asking you to rejoice is because while you are rejoicing, you are converting your trials into a polished work of faith. Once your faith is polished, it causes you to be able to grab anything that God has for you. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, it will work patience. Uh, pastor, how is patience part of the blessings? The Bible says, through faith and patience, they obtained the promise. Is there a promise God has for you in 2022? Hear this, 2022 is not yet over. You can still grab it. You can still release your faith. And you need the patience to get to the end of the year. Number two blessing that comes to you or as a benefit of rejoicing is your patience is perfected to produce results i just said it james 1 verse 4 please write it down i'm rushing through this but because i want you to have this before we go your faith your patience is perfected through results remember i taught you on patience patience is not waiting patience is possessing good character while you wait yeah anybody can wait but what do you do while you are waiting that is what rejoicing does for you number three blessing or benefit of rejoicing your harvest is guaranteed oh who has sown a seed in the year 2022 my hands are up two hands psalms 126 and verse 6 let's read it very quickly everyone please i know you're writing but suspend your writing and read it's very important one to read he that goeth forth and weeping bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again Please, sir, do you have the Amplified? Or, Ma, if you have the Amplified, let us see what it says. The Amplified version. No, 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 not Psalms. I'm talking about Psalms 126, verse 6. Amplified of Psalms 126. All right, let's read together. I want to read. He who goes forth bearing seed and weeping at needing his precious supply of grain for sowing. Hear this. We're, shall doubtless anybody sow the seed of prayer this year anybody sow the seed of service this year anybody sowed a seed of finances this year you did it at a time where it wasn't convenient because maybe you were needing someone to bless you but i have good news for you you are doubtlessly coming back with rejoicing bringing in your harvest the bible says clearly one of the benefits of rejoicing is because it, every time you rejoice you are getting ready to take hold of your harvest anywhere you see rejoicing harvest follows glory be to the name of the lord number four you shall have the desires of your heart oh pastor you don't understand what i'm saying i've desired this thing so much but not having it is being is, is prolonging my patience i'm losing listen god is telling you one more key don't let anybody see what you're going through in your face don't let i know it's hard but this is what the word of god is saying to you when you rejoice listen psalms 37 verse 4 gives us the particular scriptural reference for this musicians you can come up we are about to pray right now delight yourself also in the lord and he will do what what does scripture say come on delight yourself in the lord and he will do what what is that secret petition god is asking you to switch yeah you can see what is wrong in front of you but switch don't you ever say switch delighting yourself is another dimension of rejoicing glory be to god and then finally the fifth point your elevation and promotion is perfected oh let's look at it habakkuk we read the scripture your elevation and promotion is perfected you are expecting a promotion on your job you're expecting an increase of profit in your business you're expecting an increase in your family maybe you are wanting god to provide school fees for your school or maybe you are trusting god for an admission maybe you are about to write an exam and they've told you if you don't pay you will be drive you will be, you, you'll be driven out here this something is coming your way now something is going to come your way oh i'm prophesying someone needs to say better amen. amen as you rejoice in the lord your elevation and promotion is perfected habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18 to 19 the bible says let's read together wait if you read from verse 16 you see that's the part that says though the olives may fail though they, they may not be fruits in the stock and all that then he says yet i will rejoice in the lord and i will joy in the god of my salvation what will now happen give us verse 19 the lord is my your strength now comes then what will happen 
and he will like high feet and he will make me to walk upon my high places these scriptures actually represents elevation and promotion when you rejoice despite the negativities around you he begins to set up circumstances and situations he begins to orchestrate systems that will elevate you is there anybody here this wonderful morning that is saying lord i'm going through a lot i i i, I saw much this year but, but but i need god to come through for me i've just given you the keys but before we have you do what god wants us to do i want to give you one more scripture tell your neighbor say one more scripture luke 15 verse 7 singers please come up luke 15 7 luke 15 7 let's read this together i tell you that in the same way there will be more come on let's start again i tell you that in the same way there will be more say this word one more time rejoicing in heaven over who than hello this first first this first call is not for those of you who feel you're good you're all right with god it's for those the rejoicing that needs to take place in heaven right now is for that person that has strayed away all eyes closed i want to i'm calling you back because let me tell you your rejoicing will have no fruit if you are not in the fold I know you heard me when I was teaching. I know you heard me. You were pricked in your heart. This is the time. Don't look around. Ministers, can you pray for the person who needs to come back home? You are not born again. You are yet to receive Jesus. You are not in the Lord. Your, 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 your rejoicing will have no effect. It will just be ephemeral. You are here and you want to come back to the Lord. You want your rejoicing to bring you your blessing. Just raise your hand. I want to pray with you right now. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You have been doing certain things but you want to end this year right can you raise your hand i want to pray with you right here right now don't end this year the enemy has all manner of plans to stop the life out of you to take away your blessing but right now i want to pray with you where are you just raise your hand Le commande li apratos ki vile pa repete ski vile pena no sita say Lord I want to come back home I have not been doing the things I need to do raise your hand this hour is for that person has never given his life to Christ or maybe you gave your life to Christ for you back sleep but somehow you are in church today and you want God to meet you at the point of your need come on don't be shy raise your hand I'm here to pray with you you know you are the one I'm talking to do not harden your heart raise your hand very high every one of us did it let rejoicing sound in heaven because of you raise your hand raise your hand very quickly raise your hand very quickly thank you sir i see your hand i need you to know there is rejoicing over one the bible calls it one even if you are the only one today there's rejoicing in heaven just raise your hand god bless you sir i'm giving one more minute for someone who needs to come back to god someone who needs to say lord here i am i want my rejoicing to be effective this year i've seen one hand i want to see another i'm waiting for you 30 more seconds thank you sir there's not one person sir i need you to know god is excited about you god is excited about you now those of you who have raised your hand i want you to do one more thing stand up put your hand on your chest i'm about to pray for you shake up stand up put your hand on your chest i'm going to pray with you put your hand on your chest say father thank you for the gift of your son jesus in this season i ask that you forgive me of all my sins for the things i've done in the past i receive your forgiveness from today i will rejoice in you i will love on you i will serve you from today to the rest of my life come into my life and make my heart your perpetual home in jesus name god bless you now be seated here this at the end of the service someone is going to reach you and talk with you for the rest of us god will have us do something the rest of us god will have us do something god will have you pray what is that prayer there are persons here listen as i'm saying what i'm saying if that is your lot i will need you to stand to your feet you are here and there is a prolonged 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 expectation in your life you've been sowing seeds you can't see the manifestation i need you to stand to your feet as we are praying in the holy ghost we are going to rejoice together
it's going to be a prophetic sound you are here and trials have taken away the the, the zest trials have taken away your fees your energy your passion in the place of prayer in fact you can't remember when last you you served in a service unit because somehow many things have come that's the next category please stand the last category that God will have us do a prophetic a prophetic uh, action this morning and for those hear this this particular action oh help me help me Holy Ghost that's right the next one listen this one there is a seed that you sow it was an instruction maybe god asked you to sow the seed to a particular man of god maybe a church and you've attached something to that seed god wants to use psalms 126 verse 6 to activate it god is going to be going to wherever those seeds have been damned and they're not building results they're not yielding results this december as you rejoice as we do a prophetic action right now those seeds are going to bring the result for you if you're in that category i need you to rise to your feet we're going to do something very prophetic for those of you rising we're not praying open your eyes we're not praying no you're not you're not going to pray you're going to do something very prophetic turn to that person standing by your side if there's somebody close to you say neighbor you are going to rejoice now close it now look at me look at me look at me remember we're going to practicalize what i taught you today i told you to rejoice in the lord that in the lord is in his word now remember a promise in his word for your life concern that thing did you get what i just said i don't know what is the word you're holding on to but i'm holding on to the word of the lord that says if i rejoice he will grant me the desires of my heart i am holding on to the word of god it says if you serve the lord your god he will bless your bread and your water you take away sickness from the midst of thee i'm holding on to that word so on that word is what i'm going to rejoice i'm not going to look at what's in ahead of me i'm not going to look at what is around me i am going to consciously and deliberately rejoice and how am i going to do it i'm going to do it by the sounds there's going to be in, in, in rejoicing clapping is part of it in rejoicing shouting is part of it in rejoicing jumping is part of it so we're going to do it i don't know what it is that you are standing up for but i stand in agreement with you that as you do this prophetic action today being the 11th the remaining 20 days you will have your testimony in your hand now i need you to clap your hand